You're welcome back. And as we indicated, we're going to bring you details of that story on the controversial man of God, Bishop Obinim, who's damning all those who are criticizing him for flogging uh, two teenagers in his church. But right now, it's time for business. And Emmanuel Riafe joins me right now. Emmanuel, hey. hi. Hi, hi. Another hi, Friday. Always yes, good to see yeah, you. I can't wait to go and rest. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you look tired, though. Yeah, it's It'll it's be good for you. Out. What do you make of this Bishop Obinim issue? Well, I want to reserve my comments for now. You do? Deeply, in, inwardly, I think he didn't do right. He didn't do right. No, at okay. all, not at all. We'll get other views. But tell us, what's coming in business? Well, coming up in business, you know, yesterday, the president turned the valves on the, the FPSO, um, at, uh, the 10, the 10 field, yeah. on the FPSO uh, at Yes. Now, Talo is saying that, hey, this project has come at the right time because the challenging environment that is going through, or that the oil and gas industry is facing, demands that maybe it could have even get to, gotten to the, to the uh, what do you call it, I mean, gotten behind, but okay. now it's still going forward with the project. Well, one good thing about it is obviously it's going to boost our, you know, oil revenue. Certainly, certainly it is. All it right, is. take it away, Imano. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. President John Mahama on Thursday turned the production files on the Chinebua and Yira and Intome FPSO to officially commence production on the field. But Talo Oil but for Talo Oil, this development couldn't have come at a better time looking at the current financial challenges that they are going through. George Raffi spoke to the group CEO of Talo Oil on the FPSO, John Evans Atamios. Talo Oil over the past two years have been going through some financial challenges, resulting in a sharp decline in profits and even losses. The oil exploration firm, for instance, in 2014 recorded a 1.6 billion loss, whilst in 2015 it also recorded about a billion dollar loss. The challenge came about as a result of declining crude oil prices on the international market and challenges with the Jubilee FPSO, a development that affected oil production on the field. So Talu Oil was indeed looking forward to this 10 project to help turn around the fortunes and a pickup in daily production of crude oil. Chief Executive of Talu Oil, Aiden Heavy, says this development couldn't have come at a better time. Finally, 10 is on board for you at uh, Talu, what do you make of this uh, development? I think this is this is an amazing development. I think the, what's special about this is really the enthusiasm of all the staff, everybody who's been involved in this uh, right from the beginning. You know what you've seen is, you know, from the explorationists here in Accra and Cape Town, and London and Dublin, who've been involved in this. When I went out to Singapore to see the enthusiasm of everybody there. It's been fantastic. What will this can this field come in on stream? mean to you in terms of your financials, your fortunes going forward in times when crude prices have been misbehaving, let me say that. Yeah, well I suppose the oil price falling down has affected all the companies and, and we decided right at the start of the collapse in the oil prices that we would continue to invest very heavily uh, in, uh, in, in Ghana and you know the 10 project was a major project so we built up quite a large debt position to, to fund this project and uh, you know, to have it on stream now is fantastic because you know for it's uh, our, our capital expenditure commitments are finished you know this is the big major project and it's done and it's great to have it on time and on budget so it'll have a big change. President John Mahama, after commissioning the FPSO John Evans at Tamils, was excited about the opportunities that the Ten Fields has presented to Ghanaians, looking at the fact that most of the projects were being carried out by indigenous. Local content in these projects continue to increase. Compared to Jubilee, which was a very fast track development, we didn't you know, have an eye for local content, but in this particular one, it's been quite deliberate, quite focused, and uh, much of the work that went into this FPSO we're currently on was done locally in Ghana. I'm also hope, happy to note that in respect of human resource, we've come a long way. There are many local faces, you know, working both onshore and offshore to make this uh, project um, uh, feasible. And so today is a great day for all the partners. As I got out of the helicopter, I said it's one tiny step for the president, but one great leap for Ghana and for our partners. And so I wish to encourage you to continue to work hard. 
production assistant on the 10 FPS who says it is very exciting to be working on the field as a Ghanaian. He explains to Joy Business what he does on a normal working day. When the oil from South Sea gets to the top side, we operate the equipment as the certification to get the, uh, the products as we want them to be, separating the oil, the gas and the water. The water we need to dispose them of, but we cannot dispose them just like that because they have to meet environmental specifications. So we have a unit that treats them. So ours is to operate the units such that the set points that we are operating I'm at house when I'm having issues. You know, if we dump the water, which is off spec, we won't have issues with this environmental protection. However, engaging some of the workers, they are worried about the salary disparities between them and expatriates on the FPSO John Evans at Tamils. But Chief Executive of the Petroleum Commission, Chief Lozirin, says the commission is working on it. I would confirm to you that there is really an issue of disparity between um, some expatriate remuneration and, and local expatriate. Um, well, you know, we we'll put a market here, but I think the point is this. All around the world, there is what we call expatriate premium. If there is a difference between local compensation and an expatriate compensation, and the difference is just the premium for expatriation, that is okay with us. It happens everywhere in the world. But we are realizing that beyond this, there are some disparities. And, and I'm telling you, we are working on it. I won't give you names of companies, but certain companies have actually um, gone through the process with us. And I believe, to a certain extent, uh, we are happy that this improvement has happened in some of these. It is still happening. There are disparities we are working on. It. Some analysts doubt the view that the commencement of production at the 10 oil field could push Ghana into an oil industry very soon.